Hey guys, it's Lance at Max Sound Solutions, and today we're going to be installing this bad boy, 4 terabyte SSD from my M4 Pro Mac Mini. The company M4BoostHub.com reached out to me and said, hey, we'll send you this SSD for free if you'll do a video on your channel. And I'm like, well, I think it's about time I finally crack open my Mac Mini and upgrade the internal storage. So I'm going from a 512 SSD to a 4 terabyte SSD. And you can click up here to go to their site and get 5% off one of their SSDs. We'll do some benchmarks and test it out and see if it all goes according to plan. So stay tuned and let's get to the install. Before you do the install, you of course want to make a time machine backup of your Macintosh HD because you'll be removing your Macintosh HD and replacing it and you need to restore all of your data back onto the new drive. And here's the box that it came in and what's nice is they give you all the tools that you need to do the install. And we'll open it up and see what's inside and there we go, there's our SSD. There is our tool set. It comes with the three Torx screwdriver bits that you need, the T3, T5, and T8. And you get a spudger and a suction cup. And we'll take a quick look at the SSD. You always want to discharge any static electricity or use one of those static wristbands when you're doing an install like this before handling the SSD and during the install. So you want to put the suction cup sort of towards the front of the unit on the bottom and pull up. And then you'll see you get a little gap to get your spudger in there. And then you just slide your spudger around the unit, releasing the eight clips. There's two on either side, sort of towards where the turn is. So there's one here. I got that one. And I'm just working my way around releasing the clips. And it's a little scary, but they come undone. Uh, and you want to be very careful by the power button. That's the last place you want to go with the spudger to release those last clips. And then you just want to flip it over really gently and keep the wire connected. You don't want to disconnect that wire. That is your wire to the power button. Next, we remove eight Torx five screws. There's one on each corner. And then there's two and two on the back part of the unit. There goes one of those two. There goes the other one. And that's it. We got all eight screws out. And this part is also connected to a wire. So you just want to gently lift it up and basically just leave it standing there. You don't want to disconnect the wires. And then we've got four more screws. Two more are T5s. And then the other two are the T3s. They're itty bitty little screws. And that holds the fan down. Then you wanna pull the fan up in the opposite direction, again gently, because it's connected via a cable. And you can just do the same thing. You see the cable there. You wanna keep that connected. And that's it. We've gotten down where we need to be. There is our 512 SSD and there's one T8 screw. And we're gonna remove that and pull out the SSD. And I'm just gonna do sort of a little wiggly movement to get it out of there. There we go, it's out. And we'll just compare the two of them. Um, this is the Apple SSD, the 512, and the new one is a little fatter. And because of the camera, it makes it look like it's larger in length or something. It is not, they're exactly the same, but it is a little fatter. Uh, but they are very similar looking and the components actually look almost identical. So you wouldn't really know by looking at it that this was a third party SSD. And now we're gonna slide it into place. The gap goes on the left side, not on the right. So you wanna make sure you're putting it in the correct way. And you can see I'm fumbling a little bit here because I drank too much coffee, folks. Don't drink a bunch of coffee before you do this because it made my hands very shaky. And make sure it's pushed in all the way. I read somebody had not pushed it in all the way and they got an error and they had to open up their Mac Mini and reseat the SSD. And now we use the Torx 8 screwdriver to put the screw back in place and we're good to go. Looking nice. 
And we're just gonna put it back together. We flip the fan back over, get it in its slot there, make sure the screw holes are lined up. And we go with the two T5s first, and then we'll do the smaller T3s. Apple likes to do that, use all kinds of different size screws. Now we're gonna carefully move the next cover into place and always be careful of the wires because they're all still connected, so just be gentle. We're gonna put in all eight Torx 5 screws. Now we'll put the final cover back on and just be careful of the power button wire. You wanna kinda of fold it in there at the corner, line it up, and then go around and push in all the snaps. So I found it easier actually if you stand it up and then you push in. And I started near the power button first, and worked my way around and all the snaps got into place. And now we'll boot up into DFU mode and initialize the SSD using my MacBook Air. And for folks that don't have a second Mac lying around and they have a PC, they sell a DFU kit for PC, or if you buy the M4 Pro version of the SSD, you get it for free. And to put the Mac in DFU mode, device firmware update mode that is, you hold down the power button and then insert the power cable. And then it'll start flashing an amber light on the power light in the front of the unit. Then we get our USB-C cable, and it must be plugged into the center port on the back of the Mac Mini, the one with the little lightning insignia. And oddly enough, Apple says don't use a Thunderbolt cable, use a USB-C data cable. And I connected it to my MacBook Air, and instantly DFU mode shows up. And that will happen with Apple Silicon Macs, not with Intel Macs. And while you don't need to have the latest OS running on a secondary Mac, it should be running a relatively current OS. But the DFU Restore software is really downloaded from Apple's servers. So you wanna click on Restore and Update, and that's gonna put the firmware onto the SSD that is needed, and it's gonna install the most recent version of Mac OS. And we'll just speed this along. And I've connected my Mac Mini to the monitor and connected a wired keyboard and mouse. Sometimes you can have issues with the Bluetooth peripherals on the first setup with Mac OS. So I always like to use a wired keyboard and mouse. And I also connected my internet via ethernet. And we're coming into the home stretch and then we're gonna have to migrate our time machine backup that we did in the beginning onto the new SSD. And we're done. The connected Mac has been restored to the factory settings. Please disconnect the restored Mac from this Mac. So we'll unplug the MacBook Air. And now the Mac Mini reboots. And we're gonna go through the usual setup just like you bought a brand new Mac Mini. And this was interesting, activation lock. This Mac is linked to an Apple account. Sign in to the account. So I put in my Apple account credentials and then I'm in. And that's because I didn't turn off Find My Mac and log out of my Apple account before removing my internal SSD. And here we are to transfer our time machine back up to the Macintosh HD. So I'm going to transfer my data from my Ugreen NAS, which is where my Mac Mini Time Machine backup is. I'll go in there and select the drive. I have multiple backups on my NAS. That should do it. So let's just buzz through this and we'll jump to some benchmarks. Once this is done, all I have to do is plug in my external user account slash home folder drive and I should be up and running. Here we have the Blackmagic Disk Speed Test and on the left is the Apple 512 gig and on the right the new four terabyte ssd and the four terabyte ssd is crushing it in the write speeds but pretty much the same on the read speeds and now we have amorphous disk mark and you can see that the new ssd is actually called apple ssd ap4096 as in 4096 gigs and on the left it says ap0512z as in 512 gigs and interestingly they both have the same name apple ssd as if that new third-party ssd was actually manufactured by apple 
But Apple buys NAND chips from third-party companies, so that's why they both say that they're manufactured by Apple. It's really because they've just been flashed with Apple's firmware during the setup, and that's why it's called Apple SSD. And you can see that the new SSD is winning on the write speeds in a big way until you get down to the random 4K QD1 test where it loses by a fair margin. Apple gets 40.93 and the new SSD gets 34.26. And also on the random read speeds, it is also slightly slower, but not as big as the write. And just for fun, I brought in the Western Digital 850X, which is on my external B-Link enclosure. And you know, not all SSDs are created equal. On day-to-day -day use, you're gonna notice the fast large file transfers, not so much the random 4K stuff. So now we're gonna transfer 650 gigs to see if we throttle or if it slows down after a certain period. And this will be my last test. We're just gonna drag over the 650 gigs onto the new four terabyte. And of course it's brand new. SSDs do need to get broken in, but we're just gonna check this out and see if it throttles or slows down. And we'll check the temperatures. And we're getting like four gigs a second transferring from the external to the internal. Uh, we had one little blip there and that was it. Otherwise it held fast up to five gigs a second. It is cranking along. So that is impressive. That was a lot of gigs to transfer and the cache did a quick dump and went back up to full speed and there was no thermal throttling. We basically peaked at 71 centigrade and then we dropped back down to 45. Impressive. All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up. Thanks to m4boost.com for sending over that four terabyte SSD. Uh, I mean, the install was very simple. I really had no issues with it at all. I didn't break anything. You know, it's a little scary, maybe at first. The hardest part is just getting the base plate off and the rest of it's super easy. You just gotta be careful of the wires. And you guys know that I am the guy who promotes putting your home folder, your user account on an external SSD, which has been working great for me. I've been doing that for like seven, eight months now with my base model Mac mini and I was doing it with my M4 Pro as well. Honestly, I've had absolutely no issues with it. The only thing is there's a few quirks in that things like iCloud Drive can't be indexed by Spotlight. So you can't go in and search your iCloud Drive. And there's a few other small quirks. Uh, maybe Apple Pay is not gonna work on your Mac, but I haven't had that issue. I always use my phone with Apple Pay, so I don't know. I haven't tried using it just solely with my computer. It always asks me to use my phone. You know, the home folder external drive thing is still a very viable way to go. But if you want full compatibility with the OS and all your security and all of that stuff, it's better to have an internal SSD. You know, it just comes down to how much do you want to spend because Apple's prices are outrageous. This gets you half the price, right? So this is half the price of Apple's storage. Uh, so that's a pretty good deal. Or you can go with the external route with an enclosure and an NVMe, and you're gonna spend a little less than these SSDs. But this gives you the peace of mind of knowing that everything is internal, and of course you can add an external SSD for your video editing projects and whatnot. All right, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, give me that thumbs up, and I will see you on the next Mac Sound Solutions video.